Sluicing is a word thrown around a lot these days, but how sluicing is done now is a lot different to how it was done in the old old days. So let's find out exactly how the old timers did it and what equipment they used. In all the mining districts, there is a large number of men engaged in sluicing and they have cut water races or ditches for conveying water to their claims of a combined length of 2,300 miles or just over 3,500 kilometres and at the cost of over 300,000 pounds or over half a million dollars in Australian currency. The Tom was the first to be introduced. It could be used with a small head of water and was therefore more suitable at a time when water races were not and the necessary water had to be baled. It is composed of two inclined troughs or boxes placed one over the other. The upper box or tom proper has a grating in the bottom near the lower end and under this grating is placed a lower or ripple box. A stream of water being caused to flow through the tom, the earth is thrown in and is washed by a workman with a square mouth shovel. The sand, earth and small stones are carried through the grating by the water and fall into the ripple box, while the larger stones which remain in the grating are removed by the workman. The ripple box is set so, set so far from the tom and with such an inclination that the water used will leave the bottom covered with a thin layer of loose material. The particles of gold or other heavy minerals thus easily reach the bottom and with proper management will remain there. But lest any stray particles should escape, there are usually several bars or ripples, hence the name, placed across the lower part of the box over which the water flows, carrying with it the lighter materials. The sluice followed the tom closely in time and soon took the lead of it in use. It requires more water than the tom, but with that it will wash the earth with less manual labour. A sluice, however modified, consists essentially of an inclined channel through which a stream of water flows and the earth being conveyed into this channel, the water breaks it up, carrying the lighter materials away and leaving the gold or other minerals desired behind. They are commonly classified into first, the box sluice, and second, the ground sluice. These classes may be defined. The first as sluices raised above the bottom in which the earth must be elevated by manual or mechanical power and the second as sluices sunk into the bottom into which the earth is conveyed by a stream of water. The ground sluices are always fixed. In many cases they are merely channels cut into the bottom or bedrock but they are often substantially built of sawn planks. Whether boarded or not they are expensive the cost ranging from 100 pounds to 8,000 pounds. So there's a brief history guys about sluicing, how it was done back then. And you can also see the similarities today and the modern sluices used today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and a share. If you want to see more videos like this, just let us know in the comments. Thanks guys, this is Full o Gold. And we were ready soon to slip and get even with the captain then scuttle from the ship with his swag upon my shoulder black billy in me hand i travel the bush of australia like a true born native man